This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And welcome in. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast here, and I am Phil Mackey. It's a hostile takeover. This is Tom's fifth day of vacation, and so we're just going to try to not get everyone fired here today. Uh, I'm from Score North. Purple Daily is our flagship podcast this time of year. If you're into Vikings offseason speculation, it is the place to be. Uh, Tevin and AJ are here. Let's just uh, let's just not get fired here today, boys. Let's not do anything at the end of the week to uh, you know to to mess anything up too badly. But I do have one thing we do on our show on a regular basis. Purple Daily and our other Minnesota sports podcast, we do something called reckless speculation. Where anything is fair game. So it's a safe space for if you have an idea for a trade, if if there's a report floating around, credibly or otherwise, mm -hmm. if we get anonymous emails or tips from people, we file all of these things under the umbrella of reckless speculation. Like reckless it. speculation. Okay. <laughs> and um, we're going to do this on Purple Daily today in depth. Just a shameless plug. Like we're going to do a long segment on this. But we receive a lot of emails and tips this time of year. And we encourage it. Hey, if you've got a friend whose cousin's son works in a front office somewhere and they're hearing whispers about what the Vikings might do in the draft, you know, they might trade up, whatever it is, right? Send us just send it, send the details, send the information, and we can we can sniff around and sleuth it out. So we get a lot of emails and tips on Purple Daily this time of year. Somebody emailed me yesterday, somebody who has floated me stuff before in the past. Have they been reliable in the past? Yes. Okay. But, but always some of it could be, Hey, this, this is the type of thing that's being discussed. Got doesn't you. mean gotcha. it's for sure going to happen, Okay. but here's some information. And I don't want to read the email because I don't want to out this person, even though they are anonymous. I just, you know, I don't want them to get in trouble with. Mm -hmm. the yeah. people that they are floating information about. Mm -hmm. But I will sum it up that the tone of this email is, hey, this is something to keep an eye on. This is a conversation that's happening inside the Vikings practice facility. I am not saying it's going to happen in the end because there's hurdles to clear, but keep an eye on Justin Herbert, Chargers quarterback, to the Minnesota Vikings. Reckless speculation. What? Again, Anonymous emailer with a cousin's brother's dog's <laughs> third right. cousin's friends, spouse, friends, with the hot friend. dog vendor. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, janitor, you know, maybe mopping the floors in the corner. Those air so, vents carry, those air vents carry. You know, if you talk a little too loud, everything's fair game. Absolutely. So I just want to preface this again by saying this is not, and I am not a credible reporter, and this is not a credible report, but it is a really interesting email. Reckless speculation. Justin Herbert, here's why it makes some sense, okay? Mm -hmm. I did I, I took this email and I and I asked, well, why? Why would this why would the Chargers trade? Mm -hmm. For those of you who maybe are casual football fans, Justin Herbert is one of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL, 26 years old. Huge arm, athletic. He threw for 5,000 yards in his second year in the NFL a couple of years ago. And he's just been kind of stuck in this train wreck organization with bad coaching. And they're playing in like a soccer stadium for the first two years. No offense, AJ. For the first two years of his career. <laughs> AJ's a big soccer fan. It's okay. Uh, and so, you know, people wonder, like, what could he do with an actual organization? Like the Vikings organization the NFL Players Association just did a big survey, their second annual survey, and the Vikings organization ranked top-notch A-plus across the board, from head coach to roster to facilities to catering, food, ownership, everything, right? Like, what would it look like if Justin Herbert just was plucked from a bad organization? But why would the Chargers do this? Here's the interesting thing. So Jim Harbaugh is the new coach of the Chargers, and uh -huh. he loves J.J. McCarthy, who is one of the top quarterback prospects for Michigan. He coached J.J. McCarthy for all those years at Michigan. He's been on the record for three months saying, hey, J.J. is going to be one of the top quarterbacks taken in the draft. He is the best college quarterback I've ever seen. He is all of these great things behind the scenes. 
if you look at Jim Harbaugh and his offensive coordinator's track record over the years, Greg Roman is the offensive coordinator. It's kind of hilarious how little they pass the ball in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Jim Harbaugh plus Greg Roman equal hand the ball off 35 times a game, quarterback who manages things. Well, Justin Herbert's the opposite. He's a guy that you turn loose for like 40 pass attempts, and he's making $45 million. The Vikings, on the other hand, are among the league leaders in throwing the ball. They want a quarterback that they can put everything on, find the weapons, et cetera, et cetera. And so we've got like a month until the draft here, three, uh, three weeks until the draft. And if you start to dig on this, it makes a lot of sense. I tend to believe anonymous, reckless, speculative email guy. That's what reckless I'm, speculation. Just putting it out there. I, I would love to see Justin Herbert in purple. And if we're let's you know if we can rec recklessly speculate, what would a deal for Justin Herbert look like? Are we going to have to trade our first two or our two first round picks this year? Are we going to have to you know package players because he's got a salary attached to him? Is that even possible to trade for Justin Herbert at this point? Yeah, I think now this is just me. You know, I'm just making stuff up here. But <laughs> if you're if you're the Chargers, you're you're. Your biggest thing is you want more first round picks because your roster is sort of depleted and you're you'd be kind of starting over with a new young quarterback. If you're the Vikings, you're saying, well, yeah, but Justin Herbert makes like 45 or 50 million dollars a year. You could sort of there's ways you can sort of manipulate that over a long contract, which is what they weren't able to do with any of Kirk Cousins contracts. So if you're the Vikings, you say, yeah, I mean, that's a big chunk of change to take on. So we're certainly not going to give you all of the first round picks, but. If it was the 11th and the 23rd, and now the Chargers have three first-round picks, they'd have the 5th, the 11th, the 23rd. They could draft J.J. McCarthy with the 5th. They could draft a wide receiver with the 11th. They could draft an offensive tackle or whatever with the 23rd or a defensive player, and they could get younger and move into the future, right? The Vikings would give up both first-round picks for a 26-year-old quarterback that would be a 10-year solution at the position. And they would keep their 2025 first round pick, which we're deep in the trade weeds here. But <laughs> a lot of the rumors have been Vikings trade up to the top three, give up the 11, the 23 and a 2025 first round pick. And man, if you're giving up all of that, you better be damn sure you're drafting the right quarterback or you're going to have a lot of problems. So probably the 11 and the 23, maybe a little something else to get one of the top five most talented quarterbacks in the NFL, in my opinion. So my question there is, how does that impact the re-signing of Justin Jefferson, though? Because you, for, I, I've been so dead set on they are going to be taking on a very cheap rookie contract uh, for a quarterback. And now, okay, Justin Jefferson feels a little more fine about the situation. It's not Sam Darnold who's going to be quarterback of the future for the Vikings. He re-signs, and they can make it work because – you have all this extra change lying around. Now the salary mm -hmm. cap is both real and fake in the same time. It seems like for a lot of conversations mm -hmm. in football. So um, in this scenario, it's real because if you take on Justin Herbert, where does this extra money come from? Because you already have so much locked into a guy like TJ Hawkinson. You yeah. have now this Justin Herbert massive contract coming in and he is a solution for 10 years. And you know what he is, which is why I do like this reckless speculation here. You know what Justin Herbert is. And the thing on social media is he's, He's undefeated in what-if situations. What if he had a guy like Justin Jefferson? He about? is. There's a little bit of Kirk Cousins there, but I think if you just like look at the two guys and watch oh, them yeah. play, they're both sort of hypotheticals until they actually do something in the playoffs and yeah. <laughs> win a bunch of games. But I think the fact that Herbert's 10 years younger, he's more talented. Yes. I don't think it's – I think it's unfair to kind of put him in the Cousins bin. But to your question about Justin Jefferson – I think you'd have to just sort of swallow the pill and say, all right, well, we're going to pay, we're going to pay a quarterback a lot of money, but we, but this quarterback is more able to carry a franchise than the previous quarterback. He's also young enough to where you can, you can tack years onto a contract. This is how it works in the NFL. The longer the contract, the more you can sort of shell game, move money around from year to year. Okay. And you can create little pockets of like a, th a three year pocket where his cap hit is less, for instance, and you can bring in other players. So I would just do it and kind of figure out the rest because he, to me, Herbert's one of those guys. He's one of like the six or seven guys that I would just pay and ask questions later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you can get a couple years of Herbert and Jefferson, awesome. If you need to trade Jefferson in a year or two, okay. Jordan do it for Addison. a couple. Yeah, you got Jordan Addison. So I don't know. Again, 
Not credible at all whatsoever. Just a random anonymous email on a reckless speculation Thursday yesterday. But it's super fun and makes a lot of sense. I love so it. I, that's that's the best time part part of this year is like <laughs> it's just reckless speculation everywhere. We're trading up to two. We're trading up to three. We're trading back. We're trading for Justin Herbert. We're it's. I love it. Give yeah. me all of it. And it seems like as like you near the draft, it gets wilder and wilder. Like it because frankly, Phil, what you do every day, you sit down and you talk about football. You talk about the Vikings, and there's just endless possibilities. Like I'm sure you've covered everything from them somehow trading up to the first overall pick to get Caleb Williams to they trade out of the first round entirely. They acquire like 17 second round picks. Yeah. So this is like a breath of fresh air. It's a, it's a, it's a solution. And I think a, a pretty decent path forward. If it is, it, I mean, if it ends up coming to fruition, which right now, like you said, the label not credible whatsoever, just a lot of reckless speculation. The, we do need warning labels on these things though. Yeah. Just people, yeah. people like, if this were to get aggregated, you know, Mackie reports Vikings <laughs> trading for uh, no, no, hold on, no nope. context. Well, it's it's funny, AJ, that you mentioned the Bears because there was some you know ESPN talking head that was like, you know, I think the Bears might actually pass on Caleb Williams and take Jaden Daniels, and it's like all all year that's like all we've heard is Caleb Williams is the prize, the next Patrick Mahomes, and this guy's trying to report that if he were them. Not we call it it's smoke screen season. Yep. It's yep. yeah. And I know we're going to get out of here in a second and, and come back and talk some more sports. The actual sports segment that I'm usually on on Fridays. We'll get to Chris Eggert and Bob Sansevier. But to the warning label thing, it is funny. You know, we literally host a 365 day a year Vikings show, Purple Daily, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. And and so we're we feel like it's our obligation, even though we have strong opinions on what we think is going to happen or what we want to happen, to explore all angles, right? So we, yesterday we brought in Thor Nystrom, who is one of the, the best draft experts in the country, super entertaining. He lives in Minnesota. And Thor and I told Judd, listen, we're going to do a, a mock draft simulation on a website, Pro Football Focus. And the exercise is you have to trade back. You can't trade up if you're the Vikings. You have to trade back. Judd spent the entire exercise bitching at us for this is stupid. We they they're, they're never going to do this. No, Judd, it's an exercise. It's we're just we're just exploring all options here. So it's reckless speculation season. It's draft season. If you're a football fan, it's a glorious time to check back in with your favorite tormented football team, the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, interesting day at Target Field yesterday for a couple reasons, which we'll talk about, and an incredible sports weekend in the Twin Cities and beyond. Phil Mackey from Score North in for Tom Bernard today. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast, TomBernardShow.com, and the Tom Bernard Show podcast feeds. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida. And now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt, is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612 791 Two three four five six one two seven nine one two three four five, and work with local professionals you can trust. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and ship issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really, all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. 
Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or ValleyCarDealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Broadcast professional here. There's an on button for these microphones. I'm not sure if you guys knew that. Phil Mackey here from Score North and for Tom today on the Tom Bernard podcast. Um, this is a great weekend for sports, you guys. Tevin and AJ hanging out today. We've got just locally the Twins playing their first home series. They always build in the rain delay or the the, the blizzard day. So they don't play today, right? But they play yeah. tomorrow and Sunday. Mm-hmm against the Guardians. You got Wolves on the road against the Suns and Lakers, two potential playoff previews, depending on where the Wolves, <clears throat> excuse me, wind up in the seating. You got the women's NCAA Final Four, Caitlin Clark against Paige Beckers, Iowa versus uh, UConn. That's tonight. That's the second game tonight. You got the men's NCAA Final Four. We got the go for women playing in the NIT Final Four. Let's hang a banner, baby. Would we hang a banner for that? If the Gopher yeah. women win the NIT, we're hanging a banner, right? Absolutely. I, yeah, I think so. I, like, I personally would not hang a banner, but I feel like oh. for the state of Minnesota sports, you have to hang the NIT banner. Well, Tevin, where do you draw a line at hanging banners? It's got to be champion. Like, if you win the main championship, like if you win the Super Bowl, if you win the finals, if you win Lord Stanley's Cup, I don't want to see Western Conference – banner hanging that's all we have man for 30 <laughs> years you need to get that out of dude target. did did you guys see there was a video from the, the tampa bay rays opening day last week and it's uh, this it's this crappy ass tropicana field for anyone who's ever been to it's in saint petersburg it's just the worst state well it's the second worst stadium in baseball the oakland coliseum where there's rats and god knows what other animals raccoons running around uh, but they were literally hanging like their 10th wild card banner. They've wow. got all these because, you know, but they've been to two World Series in the last 20 years. But they had like 10 you know, wild card game appearance banners up in the rafters. <laughs> but good for them, man. Celebrate everything. <laughs> yeah. Baseball is a definitely celebrate everything. They're like popping champagne just because they got to the World Series. Like, did wait you, till you get there. Did you see the Diamondbacks? The, no, the Diamondbacks awarded their team last season with rings for winning the National League, like like as if they won the World Series. They awarded what? them with yes, I'll I'll did, I'll send it to you. Did they wait till the next year to have like a ring ceremony on the field for like it opening like, day? It was like opening day, and the the Diamondbacks like Twitter account put it out there as like I uh, like celebrating a terrific season last year as National League champs, and it has their logo and diamonds and stuff, and people were like. What is going no, on? No, 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 no. I mean, you can you can definitely sell, especially if you're the the Diamondbacks and you've done nothing for 20 years. Mm-hmm. You can celebrate having a great season, but yeah. we need to make something sacred, right? Like a gigantic championship ring should only be for winning a championship. Correct. And you hear stories all the time about you know Olympians that you know threw their gold medal off a bridge. That ring would be pawned so fast if I was a Diamondbacks player. <laughs> like I don't want this. What is going on? No. Are we sure these? Th- this isn't like when you know T-shirt companies manufacture two sets of championship shirts and yep. then <laughs> yeah, like there's there's a bunch of Diamondbacks World Series 2023 winter shirts in third world countries right now being shipped around do, do we now do that for rings are we man you're, we're manufacturing the the rings for the winning and losing teams and they just decided to actually wear them oh my god aj's gosh. holding this up for the youtube audience that is yeah. 
That's the losers of the World Series right there. And, and then they have like a full thread. It's like a close <laughs> look at our 2023 NL championship rings. And it's got, you know, one no. every the amount of diamonds because they scored this many runs and inscribed. They oh beat the Milwaukee gosh. Brewers two to nothing. And they're so like, what are we doing? You didn't win the championship. You didn't win the World Series. The only thing worse than losing the World Series is having a constant reminder that you lost the World Series <laughs> on your finger when you wear that <laughs> ring. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, you can't you can't wear that ring in public, right? No. No. Oh, no. No, that got punched immediately by 90% of the team. You know, the Lakers this season, this was the first NBA season where they had an in-season tournament. Mm -hmm. And the Lakers won the in-season tournament. Which which doesn't really get you anything. It doesn't get you like an automatic playoff bid, or you'd think that, oh, you won the in season tournament. Now you're like the you're guaranteed home court advantage in the first round or something. No, it's just an in season tournament in November December to try and make the NBA regular season less dull. And the Lakers they hung the in season tournament champions banner. Now keep in mind this is the Lakers. They literally yeah. have countless championship banners right from yep. the different eras and lakers fans were very split at best for like why are we hanging this garbage banner we i would say if the timberwolves ever won anything like the like forget about the actual nba championship if the timberwolves were to win the in-season tournament you damn right we're hanging that banner inside the, the things that are hanging inside target center are like malik seeley who passed away tragically in his jersey mm -hmm. from 20 years ago Flip Saunders, who passed away tragically. It's like people who died are the only things we're hanging for the Timberwolves in, inside that building. So I'm, yeah. for the Wolves, a thirsty franchise, I'm hanging everything. If you're the Lakers, yeah, probably not. I've thought about that. I feel like Adam Silver absolutely was like down in the tunnels of the of the forum or what, where do they play now? The crypt, the cryptocurrency. Yeah, it's a uh, crypto arena, right? Crypto arena. Probably down in the tunnels of crypto arena, probably pulled LeBron aside because he had some pretty good quotes about like, you know, this is an important tournament and, you know, this this is a, a new way to kind of make this whatever. I'm sure he probably talked to the Lakers brass and like, hey, you are a pinnacle franchise here. We need to make this a serious thing moving forward, not a flame out one year. Uh, yeah, because he wants we, we, we need you to do something. What will we'll, you scratch my back here and I'll scratch yours down the road at some right. He in wants he wants this to be, you know, 20 years from now. We still have the in season tournament. And people are going, you know, well, who's the greatest of all time? Well, this guy's got seven in-season tournament championships <laughs> as well as four NBA finals. He's way better than LeBron and Jordan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're going to see uh, on the Wikipedia page where you like see a player's resume or whatever. We're going to see uh, NBA in-season tournament finalist. Hey, here's another question for you guys. So the Twins played their home opener yesterday, and mm -hmm. I was I was looking back at home opener attendances just going back to the beginning of – Target Field in 2010. I believe yesterday was the lowest attendance, and it was still like 35,000 announced. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it was like the lowest or second lowest home opener attendance in Target Field history, not counting like there was a post pandemic year there in like 2021, even 22, if you kind of throw those years out. So I don't, do you feel like all of this? buzzkill talk about 30 million dollars being shaved off the payroll do you think that has buzz killed the start of the season here or is it is it the royce lewis injury why wouldn't fans show up after the most successful season in front in the last 20 years of this franchise is it hey joe polad comes out and says ah, that was super fun last year but uh we got to right size our business and so we're gonna we're gonna cut 30 million dollars from the payroll yeah what do you guys I think I think it's because of the talk, because as somebody who is a casual Twins fan, I got super excited. We're in the playoffs. I was at games like, I'm. Yeah. let's go. And then now when he says we're not going to really spend money, we're not going to. It sounded like we're actually going to be taking a step back. And it's like, OK, well, let me wait and see if they're good before <laughs> I invest my time and money into going yeah. to the stadium. Yeah. And I mean, going to the ballpark now is not a not what it used to be, where you could just get a ticket for like, you know, 15 20 bucks and then you go in you got to pay for parking you got to do you know and plus it's a it's a thursday kind of afternoon maybe some people just couldn't get mm -hmm. uh the time off work but i i feel like you go from like tevin said you win your first playoff game in however many years and then the owners come out and they're like hey it's it we're, we're pulling money back the tv deals you, you can't watch them anymore you can't we're not going to pay for <laughs> these guys anymore and now it's like 
well, then why why should I be getting super excited? I mean, and mm -hmm. we, we had this conversation uh, maybe a day or two ago with, with Judd about like the feeling around MLB opening day maybe isn't what it used to be. Like, I still think it's it's like almost it should be a holiday. Tevin, though, you were saying that you couldn't care less. Just cancel it. Yeah. No, <laughs> no don't cancel it. Yeah. I'm AJ's very into opening day. And I'm like, eh, whatever. But I was, I worked downtown and I mean, there were Twins fans everywhere. Like, and everybody was excited. So the people that went were definitely, you know, into it. And everybody's excited for Twins baseball to be back. But those aren't necessarily the people that you're trying to get to the stadium. You're trying to get like people like me who are casual Twins fans. And when you come out and say, we're not really going to try and make the team better this year. Yeah. So why would I go? And also, so you're trying to get more casual fans. And and at the beginning of the offseason, I think it was Dave St. Peter or somebody else from the organization came out and said, our goal with our new TV contract, whenever it happens, is to just reach more of twins territory, as they call it. Mm -hmm. That there are that they feel like they're only reaching with their current TV partnership because of the the blackout restrictions and everything. They feel like they're only reaching maybe 25% of Twins fans in the region, just Minnesota, the Dakotas, mm -hmm. Iowa, Wisconsin. And so that was their priority, right? Let's, let's first and foremost, let's reach more people. Let's remove blackout restrictions. Let's offer streaming. Let's offer a straight to consumer product, right? And then Bally Sports North or Diamond Sports Group comes in and says, you know, actually, uh, if we're going to write you a check for even 80% of what you were making last time, we want all of those restrictions still in place so we can funnel people to the platforms that we want. It's like you should make your sport widely available to everyone. It should be. It's not like football where it's 17 commitments all year long. It's appointment viewing for three hours on a Sunday. Uh -huh. There's 162 baseball games. There's spring training games for a month and a half. And then there's a month of playoffs like. Just make your sport as easy to access as possible so that if I'm playing softball with my friends on a Tuesday night in the summer or if I'm at a restaurant with my family or whatever, I can just like pop the game up on my phone or a tablet, right? Like the fact that these teams in the league still doesn't get it, it drives me crazy because it's I think it's still my favorite sport at heart, but mm -hmm. it's hard. It's hard to love baseball when owners are telling fans after a great, great season. $30 million slash from the payroll. And, oh, you have to pay. Like, I had to go get a Fubo TV. Fubo TV. You know what the hell Fubo TV is? Just to watch Twins games because we're cord cutters. We have YouTube TV. Yep. Can't get them on YouTube TV. So it's like, just give me a break on all this stuff. I need to, I'm going to do a little research because I want to find out who was the person that had the first thought of blackout restrictions. And if they're still alive, I want to pay them a visit because that yep. person is <laughs> pure evil. <laughs> Deserves yeah, his name is Bob Comcast, I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Mike, Mike Samsung. Um, <laughs> that whoever that is needs, to, I hope every day, the second they walk out the door, doesn't matter how sunny or whatever, they step in a giant puddle. We're going to black you out. Yeah. Black it, you out, Bob. Because I get it, like the <laughs> thought process of, well, if the stadium's not full, we need to not let you watch it on TV, so you have to come here and watch it. Or you could say, Let's put this most exciting product out on TV to get people excited about it so they want to come to yeah. the stadium. Yeah. Like it's the, what the twins are doing, it feels very backwards. And it's probably not all their fault. It's, you know, Bally's has got a big part to do with it as well. But it's like, guys, why would you not want it, Phil, as you're saying, as many people, as many eyes on your sport as possible? Yeah. So hopefully they fix it for, for next year. I think they will. I think they, I think they actually, if they could go back, they would have probably set the tone a little differently like four or five months ago, but you know, lowest attendance for an opening day home opener at target field. And it, it speaks in volume. So, all right, when we come back here, respected journalist and newsman, Chris Eggert will join the party here. This is the Tom Bernard podcast, Tom Bernard show.com. Mike Lindell and my fellow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. Thank you. They're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever. When you use promo code Tom, you get free shipping on your entire order. You get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb 
dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM, and you can get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the in addition to having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearms safely and worry-free. Very, very important. You've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one, don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely and through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's an extremely knowledgeable guy. Great guy, too. Will help you get top dollar, which is very important, of course. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off of your shoulders. KNL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Yes, Phil Mackey from Scorn Earth in for Tom today. Let's bring him in here, folks. He is a respected capital J journalist and newsman. Mm -hmm. Chris Eggert from Channel 5, brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation at 952-925-5608. Christopher, how are you today? I'm good. How about you? I have headlines for you. Can we flip this around? Uh, yes, but let me tell you about a dream I had first about your oh. supposed home that was like in the North Loop in my dream. Okay. So okay. it was, was Monday like, night. <laughs> What's that, AJ? I was like, did you just dox Phil? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> so, here's Phil's here's Phil's social security number in my dream as well. And three so, major credit cards. I know you don't live in the North Loop. So I know. But anyway, um, so here was a dream I had it Monday night after you were on the show and um for whatever reason i was at you and your wife's place which was kind of like a multi-level condo ish slash apartment situation and you guys weren't there somehow i was stuck into this like random room and it was raining outside and like the hill was eroding and i was worried about there being a landslide but whatever so (laughs) I was in this room and it seemed like, I'm like, gosh, this room looks like it could use a little remodeling, like a little personal touch. So I grabbed a chisel and a hammer and started chiseling into the brick and made this like (laughs) giant, like open window in your wall. For whatever reason, I wasn't thinking you guys were going to come up to that room or like I just had to do this renovation. Anyway, then y'all walked in and we're like going to make dinner in the kitchen. And I was like, oh, like what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like you know, I had I had the chisel in my hand and I had the hammer and I was like, yeah. And like I just left this big, stupid, obnoxious hole in your wall for no reason. You know, this like, is so this is so weird because my wife and I were wondering a couple nights ago, why is there a cracked out meth head with a chisel <laughs> in our living room right now? What is happening? So we called the police, and it's good to see that you're out now, Chris, by the way. You must have a good attorney. <laughs> it was so weird. And your wife's beautiful, Phil. You know this. Um, in the Your dream, wife is beautiful as well, Chris. I just thanks. want you to know. It, yeah. In the dream, she had like a, like a you know, like a, a 60-year-old gal, short Minnesota 
grandma church basement kind of haircut and yeah she just how i like it by the way <laughs> i was just like it was so freaking weird betty her little betty boop haircut yeah, oh, yeah. anyway i've been wanting to tell you that all week so go ahead That's i'm good. so glad you told me that right there that was the fact was that the weird. fact you know if, if this is what it if, if this is what it takes for us to hang out more than twice a year at a random gopher game and at the company holiday party Right. Maybe this is maybe this is us building in a third night where the Eggerts and the Mackies hang out together, and we come over and, and remodel remodel each other's kitchens. <laughs> so freaking weird. I can tell you, I can tell you where we're not going to hang out because I want to throw a couple headlines at you yeah, before yeah, you yeah. have to bolt in a few minutes. Yeah, and I don't mean to make light of this, but I, I but I, I'm going to read this headline and then ask you guys a question. A 79-year-old Twin Cities woman was killed on an African safari when her oh, open-air yeah. vehicle was charged by a bull elephant. Yeah. We had that is, on the news the other day. It's horrible. Have you guys ever thought about or have you ever been on an African safari? And how does this story change your thoughts on ever wanting to go on an African safari? I am out 100%. I'm an adventurous guy, okay? I'll you know? let these guys go because I actually have an experience with this. I think I'm in on an African safari, but it has to be like a legit, like safety, cons like conscious African safari. I'm not just getting in the back of some guy's truck and driving through the desert or the jungle, but I think I'm in. But this one, because I think the elephant, she was killed because the car rolled on her. So the yeah. elephant didn't like stomp on her or like if that not that it makes a difference but, the, but like i don't that's know that's all part of like the equation and the risk is like you're in an open air vehicle and there's these massive animals that could charge you or could catch your vehicle what if your vehicle pops a flat tire and there's four tigers you know i don't know it's true aj yeah, what do there. you got i never had the desire to really go on an african safari but this makes me have a little more interest like th think about how more interest yeah what? think about just like like that's gonna make your blood pumping like that's an adrenaline filled just the the thought of like the chance that a bull elephant is gonna mm -hmm. charge your vehicle and then you know you're in your own action movie there's somebody yeah. there to film it but it's just like think about the stories afterwards because in my mind they're just like you just kind of drive through the sahara and it's like mm -hmm. look at the look at the prairie dogs look at the you know look at the giraffes i didn't i didn't know aj was such an adrenaline junkie that he's just like jonesing to be chased by a I yeah. I by a bull fun. elephant in the also, in the wild. I would need to see the stats on the number of deaths on like safari related deaths. Because is this like just one out of you know a million, or is this a regular occurrence? Is it 50 50? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are the odds? Uh, I went to Africa probably 10 years ago with for work, and we mm. did a story about some lion researchers on the Serengeti from University of Minnesota. And like we were out in one of those trucks it wasn't a sightseeing thing it was like a working research truck dude it's insane and i don't care how like professional the operation is it's africa man everything's yeah. about ready to break down and you don't <laughs> like like even a walkout they had an outhouse and i had to go out to the outhouse in the middle of the night there's freaking baboons everywhere <laughs> and like tigers or i mean lions and it was like it's insane. I don't know that you can have a safe safari. Like, I think there's a certain amount of risk that's involved in it. So, AJ, maybe you're th – that that's your next stop. Dude, right. so you're just, like, opening an outhouse door, and there's just, like, a baboon reading a newspaper, taking a morning dump? or Well, the and, you know, they'll, like – I mean, they're mean little buggers. They, I mean, the whole thing was horrifying. And, like, I'm sleeping in this, in this University of Minnesota. They call it the Lion House, which is, like, a – like a very, very like rustic 1950s two bedroom Rambler type situation. And um, the toilet didn't work. So you had to go outside and they're like, yeah. And <laughs> it does regularly happen where giant snakes will get into the house. No, nope. no, nope. out, out on safari. Nope. Just now. And, no, and oh, now like, Tevin's out. Oh, you didn't think about the snakes? Okay. Yeah. Well, you have to ahead. sleep under a net because there's these things called TT flies, which if they if they yeah. they're these giant flies, and if they bite you, they give you this thing called like night sickness night sickness. And it's like mm -mm. 
Well, Mm-mm. it's adventure to go to Africa. I'll say that. Dude, I won't camp outside Minnesota because of mosquitoes. Like, I don't want to get a mosquito bite. <laughs> These teensy flies are horrifying. <laughs> if you ever want to, like, go down the rabbit hole, just look it up, and you're like, I'm never going to Africa. Gosh. Okay, I know you have to go here. So yeah. in 30 seconds, here's my next headline and a question for you, Chris Egger. Chris Stapleton is at U.S. Bank Stadium this weekend. I think oh. it's the Chris Stapleton Great American Road Show, and yeah. uh, he's going to pack U.S. Bank Stadium. So he he is on my short list of performers I would love to see that I never yeah. have. Yeah. Who is at the top of your list of artists or bands that you've never seen that you would love to, your bucket list? Uh, they have to still be alive. Like, it, yeah, it can't be... I- I really would like to go to see Metallica. They're going to be at, um, yes, dude. they're going to be here this summer. Mm-hmm. And I had a chance to go. I bought tickets for their Injustice for All tour when I was in high school. And it was a tour where they took the Lady Liberty and like pulled her apart with ropes at the end of the show. And it was like this, like really like very kick, violent kick a thing. And I made the state track meet that weekend. <laughs> and so I had to go to the state track meet. I couldn't go to the stupid Metallica show. Wow. <laughs> And that's ta- like 30 years ago. I'm still so mad about it. Your athletic talent costing you great experiences at concerts, man. So. Yeah, my great talent. That's why I don't have a foot today. I was such a great athlete. <laughs> oh, it's man. Yeah, just- you made the tournament, the state tournament with one foot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually had both my feet in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like the high school Paralympics. It was the actual state <laughs> You weren't like the blade runner just zooming down the track, no? Yeah, what was that guy's name? Oscar uh, uh, Pistorius. Pistorius. Yeah. Pistorius. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there he is. So, wow. Yeah, well, that's my um, show. let us know if you have any other dreams about anyone on the show, really, if you if you show up at AJ's house. Maybe you and AJ are going to be – here's the dream tonight. It's going to be AJ and Chris Eggert running for their lives at some African safari situation. We're in a safari. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Tevin is safely tucked into a very secure vehicle, enjoying yep. himself. But snakes, in no snakes. way, in no way, will have one cover. Uh, will encounter any bodily harm from any wild animals. Amazing, Chris Eggert from Channel Five, brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free forty-eight minute evaluation at nine five two nine two five five six zero eight. Bob Sansevier Sports. Bob Sansevier from the BS Show coming up next. And if we can remember where we left off on Monday, that four-day tease, we'll pick up. I do remember, by the way. Okay. We're going to talk NFL draft, Vikings draft, quarterback speculation. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. I'm Phil Mackey. In for Tom, TomBernardShow.com. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hi guys, it's Chris Eggert from Channel 5 Morning News along with my friends, Megan Newquist and Ken Barlow. In the morning, we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories. I've been lucky enough to be part of this Five Eyewitness News morning team for more than a decade now. This is where I've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years. We're like a family too. We are family, Chris. Working with you and Ken and Hannah, it is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there are so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. To all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth 
whenever you want, two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota, started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida, and now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt, is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com or call Matt at 612-791-2345, 612-791-2345 and work with local professionals you can trust. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. All right, Phil Mackey from Score North in for Tom Bernard today. Bob Sansevier from The BS Show. You can find it on Apple, Spotify, and the bsblog.com. Bob, I have a question for you and the whole crew here. To you start. asked to go away. So we, yes. we started bef- right before we cracked the mics almost an hour ago. We were t- So I'm a, I'm a huge wrestling nerd still, even at age 38. WrestleMania weekend, WrestleMania night one, night two. I will be sitting on my couch late at night, uh, just like I was when I was 13 years old. If you could bring one thing from professional wrestling to real sports, what would it be? I'll go first just to give you guys an idea. Go ahead. I think I think surprise entrances. You know how like we were talking about this before the show. How like there's like a championship match in professional wrestling, and then all of a sudden like somebody else's music hits, and oh my gosh, oh like Hulk Hogan is here. You know, you get to the end of the World Series, it's the Diamondbacks, it's the Rangers, and all the you know it's Game Seven. All of a sudden, the Yankees are here. Wait, Aaron Judge. What else can we bring well, from got, professional wrestling? I'll tell you what you bring, and it would it would change the game, and it would be so much more exciting. You put a ring around a uh, NFL field. You could slingshot yourself with the uh, <laughs> with you had the ring, right? You can't go out of bounds. You hit the ring, and boom, you're going. Yeah. Think about oh. the tackles. They, you know, as they're slingshotting, they could lift them up over their head and pile drive them. Or can now you that, throw a guy over the top rope and he's out of bounds? You know, you could well, do it that, that way that's too. That's the only way you get out of bounds. You get thrown over the rope. I tell <laughs> like you, like a Royal that, Rumble, that would be exciting. You also, I mean, you know, like think about doing the old, uh, you know, button hook. Well, you go into the end zone, you ricochet off the ring, and there's your button hook. <laughs> you make <laughs> the just, catch. Just flying by, doing a instead of a four point six forty, you're doing a one point seven. Here's another one. I think we need just like one random chair shot at any given time during a golf round. So it's it's Jordan Spieth, it's Justin Thomas, it's Tony Finau in a group. And yeah. each of them get one from the back random chair shot while someone's teeing off. Oh, man, Tony Finau, he's just he's one stroke behind here on the 17th. And Justin Thomas loading up the steel chair. Oh, my God. Yeah, for me, it would be the give them give like the star of whatever team a microphone at some point during the game and like just stop the game like the two minute warning in football. Stop the game. And now Patrick Mahomes is about to tell us what he's going to do to this defense. And they just have a big monologue back and forth. What are they doing? Cutting a promo. (laughs) I want I want the money in the bank contract. Imagine the Super Bowl just wraps up the Super Bowl. (laughs) The Kansas City Chiefs are victorious. It's been a long, hard-fought game. Patrick Mahomes wills them back into a position to win, and on a last-second field goal, eh, they're tired. The confetti falls, but wait, who's that? It's Kevin O'Connell. The the Vikings are here. Yeah, he's cashing in. He's cashing in. (laughs) You know, actually, it's a W. It's a WWE stole. They what's their latest iteration? uh, There's the WWE. Yep, yep. All right. If they were smart, they would overtake. Disney World at the end of the Super Bowl. I'm going to WWE 903. We're going to <laughs> WrestleMania. Sorry, Disney. Yeah. How? Do, by the way, how does that work? Because it happens at the end of every Super Bowl. The star player or the MVP gets corralled by like a producer on a chaotic confetti filled field. 
and they and they and they ask him, "Where are you going to go, Patrick Mahomes?" And he do they just have like a briefcase of cash saying, "Hey, if you say oh, this, here's a hundred thousand dollars," or how does I'll that bet, work? I bet they all have to sign the week before that they would agree or not agree, and then uh, you're not going to see that guy being pulled aside. You'll find the next best player being pulled aside. I'm going I'm to sure Six Flags. No, not Six yeah. Flags, Patrick. Like we're going to Vegas. <laughs> we're going to the club. Dolly World or whatever the heck she yeah. calls it. We're going to Branson. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to hop on a bus <laughs> right. with all of our Stanford. grandparents. <laughs> So, okay, I, I do remember where we left off on Monday. We were talking yes. about what the Vikings should do at quarterback in the draft. So why don't you why don't you pick it up? Right. What's your what's now, your what's your strong take right I'm, now about? I'm gonna give you two things. I when I was younger, I didn't think like this, but I look at things with some logic. And to me, it's logical that they don't make the trade with Houston unless they have something in place or the parameters of a deal are in place. So I'm convinced that they have already set something up. And if you're going to do it, you do it with a team that you know you can get the guy you want. So I think it's looking more and more like it'll be New England. And particularly a week or so ago, their coach and GM, well, you know, we may not keep that pick. If you're the Patriots, the best player in the history of your game, the GOAT was taken in the sixth round. You used the first round pick a few years ago for a guy who flopped. You have a lot of needs, and you want to get those. Uh, you want to take care of that with a couple of first-round picks, plus maybe the first from next year, which they could get. They could hold them up for that uh, the first overall pick next year. But no. if you're the Vikings and you think that this is the guy, then you do it. And also, logic tells me, if you're Quasi Adolfo Mensa, particularly him more than O'Connell, you know by drafting Drake May, you're not going to start him this year. You buy another year as the GM. Because if things fall apart, and you use that 11th pick and the 23rd pick and you're, you're a middling team, they may be looking for a new GM. So this yeah. buys him an extra, another year. Now, can I take the logic to the Timberwolves? Yes. There is no way that Mark Laurie and A-Rod Rod wind up with this team. They're claiming, oh, you know, because apparently the Star Tribune had a story about binding arbitration is mm -hmm. in the contract. Is it If it's that or the courts, even if it goes against Glenn Taylor, the final arbiter – is the NBA and their owners. 75% mm -hmm. have to agree to the sale. There is no chance that 75% of NBA owners are going to allow the sale of an NBA team at $1.5 billion when Phoenix went for $4 billion and Michael Jordan sold his shares for uh, or in, uh, in what, uh, Charlotte for $3 billion. Yeah. No way is, are they going to allow that to happen. So there's no way that Glenn Taylor loses it to those two guys. Anyway, but, that's that's logic is how I look at it. Yeah, Tevin, go ahead. But I was gonna say, if why would they? I guess if why would would they care if he sells his shares for less? Because if he sells his team or the Timberwolves for one point five when they're worth three, it's not necessarily going to mean that now the Phoenix Suns are worth less or the Lakers are worth less. No, to so. them there's a ripple effect that then there's a perception that the value is not there. For these teams, I mean, it's it like a house in your neighborhood selling for yeah, half as much as as you know the other twenty nine homes in the mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. And what we truly don't know is why this was struck. We all believe that Taylor didn't want to let go of the team, you know, but maybe they didn't have the money, and he was at the time really desperate to sell. Why it took so long, and they had all these tiered payments. So yeah. I, I, and it's I funny because like because A Rod and Lori are saying, "Hey, we didn't ask for the tiered payments. Glenn was the one." By the way, a couple things on this. There's a number one. A Rod and Lori last week, last Friday, decided, "Okay, we're gonna come out and we are gonna end Glenn Taylor's reputation. We're gonna come out." And they, you know, they went. They did the Sportico interview. They went on Dave Moore's NBA podcast with our with our guy Kyle Tige at Scornart too. And they said we are gonna we are we're gonna hire a PR firm to put together a bunch of talking points that cut as deep as possible. They know that fans don't like Glenn Taylor here because Glenn has been kind of a bumbling owner for the last twenty years, and so they hit all the right notes. But winning the PR battle to to what Bob was sort of saying doesn't really matter. This is, all, is not at all. This is all. What's odd about this is the the two sides. There's two steps, and you nail both of them. They're fighting about this first step, which is based on the language of the contract. They either did or didn't hit the three or four different benchmarks. And for some reason, 
there's like a gray area that they're fighting over when it should be black and white drawn up in the contract. But to your point, the NBA Board of Governors, the NBA owners, which I think meet next week, they can just come out and say, nope, you know what? Happening. We're not really into this pairing. We don't we feel like for any reason they could they could they could think, you know, we're hearing you guys are kind of house poor and uh, or we just don't like the way that this right. flamed up publicly. So we're out. Right. They could say you've sullied the good name of the NBA. Right. Out. <laughs> and also, let me throw this out. I'm going to hit th- throw two names at you. And it, I, Phil would know. You guys may know. Tom Clancy was going to be the next owner of the Vikings. So yep. was Reggie Fowler. Mm-hmm. It didn't work out. If these guys had the money, why would they not have come up with it on the 27th? Yeah, there's no and reason and, not. And to. at the end, it's like okay, the paper is due. It's a term paper, right? And and at the end, they were and by they, it's mostly Alex. So Mark Mark put in the initial large chunk, and that's why Mark. So they they own thirty six percent of the Timberwolves. Mark reportedly owns twenty nine percent. A Rod seven percent, and it, it's been on A Rod for the last like year and a half to come up with the other chunk to get them more equal partners. And Alex went through one private equity firm and that was sort of fizzled or rejected. And now and at the last minute, here's another private equity firm. It's all just kind of thrown together. Now, um, it's wild, man. Could you imagine now he once was the owner of a USFL team. I'm Donald Trump. Could you yeah. imagine if they were dealing with Trump? How long did you think it would take before he would call a rod, a liar and a cheat? Oh Look my God. Steroids. <laughs> Be- you can't oh. trust this man. That's what we need. We need Glenn to come back over the top. Now, the NBA did reach out to all parties on Saturday. So it went Glenn press release, I think, on Thursday or Wednesday. A-Rod Laurie media tour on Friday. And I believe on Saturday is what I heard. The NBA reached out and said, everyone, shut the bleep up. We're in the middle of a playoff stretch run. We don't need this going back and forth. But the NBA could put an absolute end to it by saying, yes, they do get a 90 day extension from the 27th or <laughs> please go away. Yep. We don't want to have anything to do with this. Frankly, they should just put an end to it now. Cause then it, it becomes mute, moot and mute. There's no reason to continue it. Then if the NBA yeah. rules, no, you, you missed the deadline or sorry, Glenn, they have an extension. Yeah. But what's funny about this whole thing is, so again, Glenn Taylor, his Q score is not the highest over the years, and he has made a lot of mistakes. He has overseen a lot of embarrassments. Fans don't love Glenn Taylor. And we're sitting here, a lot of fans today are begging for Alex Rodriguez, of all people, to win out in this ownership battle. Can you imagine asking Minnesota sports fans or any sports fans 12 or 15 years ago, would you like Alex Rodriguez? Would you trust Alex Rodriguez to be the owner of your favorite basketball team, baseball team, whatever it is? Well, Wild mind, times. For people who have an issue with Taylor, he's the reason you still have an NBA team here. Mm-hmm. He bought that team to keep it here. Others would want wanted to move it. And the other thing is he saved the newspaper of, you know, in Minnesota, the Star Tribune, by buying that. So I mean, for whatever you think, and a guy makes one hell of a greeting card. But he really does. <laughs> for whatever you you think about him, I mean, he has he's done more good, I think, for Minnesota than bad. So yeah, I, he, I, I mean, I, I don't know him real well. I I mean, I found him to be um, likable when I dealt with him, but distant. That I mean, that's how I would describe him too. And I'm not, not going to pretend to. Down. Well, I'm not buddies with him, but that's how I I felt he was. Yeah, and I'm not going to pretend to know him all that well either. I think. Yeah, he's just, you know, I think he means well, and I think he obviously has been an excellent businessman with the 82 corporations that he has set up underneath, you know, whatever, Taylor Corp structure. But um, it sucks because I would prefer that we've got some fresh, new, sort of ambitious ownership, but I don't know that Mark and Alex are, I think we're, we're almost choosing between two bad options here. And but if the third option is someone that's going to move the wolves to Las Vegas, well, I don't want that to happen. Look what they did to I don't know how much money they wound up spending to build this owner's suite underneath, uh, you know, Target Center or with the, that corridor where the, yeah. the locker rooms are. Why? I mean, you needed to have some place so you can schmooze. It's just it, it uh, they're just being a little too uh, I don't know precious isn't the right <laughs> word, but I'm not. I'm not a fan of them, and I I do think I am inclined at the moment to believe Taylor more than them. 
yeah. on this about, you know, they did miss deadlines. Yeah. And he doesn't want to. I mean, as a businessman, why would you want this team to go for one five when you had, uh, you know, that it's worth closer to three, but he had to know that when he made this deal. Right. So this might have been his plan all along. He knew these guys could never really come through and make follow through on the commitment that they made. My guess is in just our last minute or two here, my guess is this is just my own speculation that they had a they had a deal and they also had kind of a handshake over, you know, Becky's lasagna in Mankato three years ago that, uh, hey, we're going to push this thing to the finish line. Somewhere along the line, I think two things may have happened. Number one, Glenn kind of soured on them. Lack of communication. Hey, you can drive. I'm going to give you the keys to drive the car. But they like you said, they drove it a little too aggressively. They, they, they built out a couple things in the arena. But I think it's very possible that they may have missed a checkpoint timing wise by maybe a couple days or maybe they came up a little short on a payment. And Glenn said, you know what? We can keep it moving forward. It's no big deal, but kept it in his back pocket. If this thing sours or if I don't love the way it's going or if I think I can get double the value, I can always go back to that second checkpoint that technically they missed. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's drawn up black and white. There's See, no ambiguity. Yeah, no, but he, think, he's not going to. I mean, he the team is worth three billion dollars or close to it mm -hmm. from one five. And the other thing, he can't really find another buyer because they still retain what 40 percent of this team. So he'd have to use all of his plus his partners yeah. and he'd be out entirely. He doesn't want that. So he's I think he's just going to go along like this. Maybe when he does, we'll use the term retire. They will wind up getting the team. Yeah, so yeah. it's weird. crazy, man. I think this would go a lot differently if the Wolves weren't currently first in the West and looking like they're about to bring a championship to Minnesota. If they were a bottom-dwelling team and kind of struggling, we'd probably have a full A-Rod-led Wolves team by uh, now. Are you, okay, very quick, I know we're wrapping up. I'm skeptical of them being NBA champions. You take a look at that West. Come it on, is bunched, and it is hard to get, Bob, to get through that West. Bob, you got to ignore you that. And you got to just lean in, oh, lean into the world. Ignore logic and history. I am, I'm somewhere in between. I agree with Bob. They might play the Lakers with Anthony Davis in the first round and LeBron. They could play the Warriors in the first round. So it is the Western conference is a gauntlet. I do think they make a run, but it is still the Timberwolves until proven otherwise. So championship is hard to put in the same sentence. And I do think Anthony Edwards, phenomenal talent, but I think there's still some maturing and growing up to do. And, uh, you know, and maybe Cat will be back because he is, as Speaking Anthony of. Edwards says, he's their best player. Please. Yeah, I think Cat just needs to stand in the corner and launch 10 threes and stay out of everyone's way. But we'll see when he comes or back stay on the bench. Anyway, they, they're yeah. not doing so shabby without him, are they? They're doing they're doing yeah. great without exactly. him. That's a big topic here for the offseason for sure. Or it even really like is. if he tries to come back with a couple games left in the regular season and it looks clunky. Man, some big decisions. Bob okay. Sanzevier from the BS show. What are your final thoughts here on this uh, this Friday? There it is. I didn't the have show. it on the other day. But super, I... super BS, BS show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, my final thoughts. Well, we, okay, this is, we're entering, or already have entered, the greatest week in sports because baseball has just begun, right? Even though the Twins... 15 strikeouts, 0 for 12 with runners in scoring position yesterday. Yeah. But baseball has just begun. The final four for men, and to me, no one I have spoken to is more excited for the – they're so excited for the women, less excited for the men. But mm -hmm. that's the added thing, and mm -hmm. then you have the Masters. I mean, this weekend and next weekend, it's just a great week coming up if you're a sports fan. We're three the, – the confluence of three sports – Four, if you want to look at men's and women's different. All right, okay, and let me ask you. I, I don't care who wins the men's. I want Caitlin Clark and Iowa to win the women's. Where yeah. are all of you? I uh, I mean, I'm I, I'm rooting for Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers when they're playing each other tonight at, I yeah, think, 8 o'clock Central Time. So whoever whoever wins that game, I want to win the whole thing. And I will say that. If Iowa loses, then I want Paige Beckers to win. But yeah. What about uh, you two? Hopkins finest, Paige Beckers. Like, I'm excited to see her hoop. Caitlin Clark, I think just the overall story of her being, you know, setting all these records and shooting the lights out, it has to end with a championship or it almost feels like a little bit of a letdown. So it would be nice to see her. But then you also have South Carolina undefeated on the other side. That is going to be extremely tough to get past. 
I just hope both teams have fun. Whatever. <laughs> AJ's only AJ's only thinking about Wild and Winnipeg. Oh, the, oh, the Wild and the Jets. No, well, whoever, whoever's whoever wins that matchup tonight, I think is like I. I that's who I'm rooting for against. Mm-hmm. Who I think will inevitably be uh, South Carolina. South Carolina is going to buzzkill yeah. all of this right. by the end if of the. If I'm weekend. the relatively obscure Iowa coach, I pull my team aside and I point at Caitlin Clark and I say what Herb Brooks said. You lose this game, you'll take it to your effing graves. Yeah. And let them know you better give it every ounce and beyond of what you got. Because this a is bruise not on the be thigh. Easy. A bruise on the thigh is a long way from the heart. Yeah, you're right. Give it to both of these games because this UConn is not going to be easy for them because yeah. Beckers, they are the same player when Beckers is healthy. All right. Bob Sansevier from the BS show. You can find it wherever you find podcasts, the BS blog.com. See you, Bob. Take care, guys. Good stuff. All right. Phil Mackey here. I'm going to say goodbye to you guys here from Score North and Purple Daily. It's been a blast filling in for Tom Bernard a couple days this week. It's the Tom Bernard Podcast, TomBernardShow.com. In addition to having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearms safely and worry-free. Very, very important. You've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one, don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely and through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's an extremely knowledgeable guy, great guy, too. will help you get the top dollar, which is very important, of course. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off of your shoulders. KNL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and ship issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really, all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. Mike Lindell and my fellow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. Thank you. They're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TOM. You get free shipping on your entire order. You get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA. On sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM, and you can get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Back here on the Tom Bernard Podcast, uh, Tim Lammers is brought to you by Bradshaw Bryant, personal injury lawyer seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Timmy, how are we this morning? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, got the, uh, you like scary movies, guys? Yes. Yes, uh, is it, absolutely. Are you going to, are you going to review the first Omen? Is that, is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> the first Omen, the prequel movie. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, baby. To the 1976 film. That original film was in 1976. And it is scary as all get out, man. I am so impressed with this movie. I don't know if you saw the show Servant. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan did it. It's on Apple TV+. Plus. There's a really, in this show, she's really creepy. Her name is Nell Tiger Free. And she stars in this as this negotiate. Uh, which is like a nun in training. She okay. goes from the U S to Rome to care for orphaned girls, this group of orphan girls. But while she's there, 
this priest pulls her aside and said, you know what, there's a conspiracy going on here with a faction of the church that is trying, they're trying to birth a new antichrist. So she gets pulled into it. She herself is an orphan. So all of a sudden, when she hears about these horrible things happening, all this stuff is bubbling up to the surface that she didn't know if she was hallucinating before in the past or whatever, but things get pretty nefarious pretty fast. Uh, uh, you know, it is a perfect prequel to The Omen. Um, it brings you right up to the point where we meet, uh, where Damien, where that, you know, it shouldn't be a surprise because it's a prequel, yeah. but it brings mm -hmm. you to the point where that 1976 film begins. So if we get a sequel, and I really hope we do, it'll either be a remake of The Omen or because there's this special little twist they add, um, it could go off into a different direction, which would work just as well. So I guess it's it's a matter of it making money. It costs about 30 million to make, which is, you know, manageable if they want to bring it back, you know, bring in, bring the money back. Um, I certainly hope so. It, it, it's really a great horror thriller. You know, it's something that's so welcome to the franchise because that original Omen was a huge hit, produced three sequels. The last one was a TV movie that did nothing. They tried to remake it in 2006. That went nowhere. But I think this really reinvigorates the franchise. So nine out of 10. Ooh. Oh, this baby. This... I like horror films anyway. And I brought my oldest daughter. Not, you know, she's not like a 14 year old. She's 28. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hard R. I would never do that to a child. But my oldest daughter is a horror film aficionado as well. And we both thought it was just unbelievable. Knockdown, drag out, scary as all get out gory i mean you might lose sleep let's just put it that way oh, after seeing this movie like the religious based kind of scary movies there's something about those that to me at least makes them 10 times more scary oh the yeah yeah because they are so rooted in truth okay mm -hmm. um and and i could really get into stuff about that because the religious aspect is huge the religion mm -hmm. aspect is huge in this movie and like any great movie. Okay, yeah, maybe fantastical. Maybe some people believe in, you know, demonic possession or whatever. I'm not going to judge. You know, you believe what you want to believe. Oh, yeah. But no matter the case, a successful film to me has always been the re relatability factor. And I don't care if you think this stuff is outrageous or not. You're still going to relate to it on some level. So that's why this movie works. Because, again, it's a subject that so many people you know, are, are in, you know, in touch with, especially the Catholic church. Okay. I grew up Catholic. All right. You know, so I, I'll talk with Tommy about this again next week because, you know, growing up Catholic man and Bob Sansevier as well. I mean, you yeah. know, there's just yeah. something about the religion that they can really spook you growing up. Saying, it's got to change the way that you watch the movie. Cause there's things <laughs> in there that you're like, Oh, I, when I go to church or wherever, oh, yeah. I see these things or I see people wearing that look like the people that are in these films and they're oh, doing yeah. heinous stuff. Yeah. That would freak me out. Is nine out of 10 on the Lammer meter. Is, where does that rank as far as other movies? Is it, Cause that's the highest number I think I've heard you say is that like since a, you've been coming on here. Is that a must watch? Is that what yeah. I'm hearing? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. I mean, honestly, I would think, you know, that's up there with your American fiction and your holdovers, um, past lives, which was this wonderful uh, South Korean film that came out last year. That's another one of those. That's a must see. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is up there. I mean, you know, I, I give a lot of 7.5s and eights, but when you're getting up there into nine, no movie's ever a perfect movie, but, uh, I get about tens once in a while, but generally nine is going to be your shining example. Yeah. And again, I mean, you, you have to go about this from the intended audience point of view, you know, I gave Godzilla 5.5. It would have gotten the hammer if I would have gone from an adult point of view. But that movie's made for kids. Yeah. Right. But again, like you mentioned, you guys, about that relatability, that religious angle that you plug into that. I, this to me, mo this movie will have a broad appeal. But, you know, it's a smaller film. You know, it's 20th Century Films. It's a Disney's, you know, subsidiary. It used to be 20th Century Fox. Uh, so I don't know if it's going to get as much promotional love as say one of their Avengers films. Mm -hmm. I hope so. I think this film will build on word of mouth 
and have legs from there is what's going to happen. So uh, quickly, I must mention also on Netflix is another brilliant movie called Scoop. It is about uh, BBC Newsnight's uh, disastrous interview. And I'm talking disaster from the point of view of Prince Andrew in this about his relationship, his friendship with uh, Jeffrey Epstein and, and Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh, compelling from beginning to end. It's about the, the events that lead, led up to you know, the interview itself. And mm -hmm. then plus the recreation of the interview is stunning. Um, and and you, you, you're left with the question of why the hell did he ever agree to this in the first place? It was a no-win situation for him. And again, so many people have described this interview as a train wreck, whatever. You're going to get it all in scoop and quickly i must plug on forbes just posted not too long ago an interview that i did with jillian anderson uh who plays emily uh mate mateless who interviewed uh she played uh interviewed jeffrey epstein excuse me jeffrey epstein is played by rufus sewell and i also interviewed billy piper who played the real life producer of uh, the interview. Her name is Sam McAllister. Plus, I talked with Sam McAllister, and I do believe I saw a, a Facebook post from um, uh, Kristen this morning about her interview with Sam McAllister as well. So yeah. I'm sure you'll be talking about it. Uh, it highly recommended movie on Netflix today. Scoop. That's awesome. And yeah, definitely everybody, if you haven't gone and checked out Tim's writings on Forbes, always a good read, very entertaining. Um, with the scoop in your interviews, I know you want people to go read it and not give it too much away. Did you get into any of kind of their, because obviously when actors take on roles to kind of dive into and do a lot of research, do you die, talk about any of the research that they did and in looking into and how kind of things they found out to get into character? Oh, yeah. I mean, the interesting thing about this, and, and I'm sure if Kristen's seen this movie, she can tell you the same thing. Now, I watched the, the full 43-minute interview right before I watched the movie. The recreation of the interview is so unbelievably real that you feel like you're watching the interview itself. So Jill, Jillian Anderson says, you know what? I didn't sit down with Rufus Sewell to, to rehearse this interview. We both came into this cold, like, obviously, Emily uh, Matt Maitlis and, and, and uh, Prince Andrew did. Mm -hmm. And so that feels real. It adds to the tension. Uh, and, and ultimately, she said she felt like she was in a it was a surreal parallel universe that she was in because it just felt like I'm talking to Prince Andrew. Because when yeah. you see when you see Rufus Sewell as Jeffrey Epstein, you're not going to recognize Rufus Sewell. It's just unbelievable. I mean, and, and so basically, Billy Piper had the same feeling. And Sam McAllister, who was there, had that same sort of feeling like. I can't believe that this feels like this is happening all over again. So uh, my interviews on Forbes, I posted uh, that interview on directconversations.com. So you can get the link there as well. So please do that. All right. Well, hey, Timmy, thank you so much for joining us this week. We will catch you next week. Uh, Tim Lammers brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant Personal Injury Lawyers. Make sure to go contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Timmy, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. You too. You too. Top of our podcast. We'll be right back after this with the queen of entertainment, Kristen Burt, when we come back. Don't miss out on the 66th annual GSTA Rod and Custom Spectacular Car Show. It's happening on April 6th and 7th at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds Coliseum, presented by Brainerd International Raceway. Enjoy the area's finest hot rods, custom street machines, and motorcycles that'll be on display around the Coliseum. You'll be able to see cars from the original Ford drag team up close. Any kids that attend can get a free Hot Wheels car, baby, while supplies last. You can find discount tickets and more information available online at gstarod-custom.com. Don't forget about the free parking, too. Go to gstarod-custom.com. Is that text you're sending so important that you miss your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law 
and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the final segment of the Taj Mahal. That's what we're calling (laughs) me and AJ running the last little half hour is the Taj Mahal, Tevin and AJ patent pending but we are here with the queen of entertainment as aj says kristen burt kristen burt entertainment news is brought to you by north american banking company go to nabankcode.com to learn more member fdic equal housing lender kristen how are you doing today doing great i have to say that if the tom bernard listeners do not watch scoop this weekend i think we've gotten the full (laughs) extent (laughs) of what you should be doing (laughs) between tim and myself (laughs) because we talked about it yesterday he gave her a good rundown as well uh there you go you have your weekend plans all set (laughs) yes i'll be watching it this afternoon most likely and yeah between you and tim i'm very excited to see how this goes because it sounds phenomenal yeah, it, it really was. And and just to add a, a little point to this, um, Emily Maitlis, which I know t- Tim just spoke about, she was the BBC uh, journalist doing the actual interview. She has her own project coming down the pike um, on Amazon, and I believe it's going to be a three-part series. So we're going to get more of this. This won't be the last that we hear of the Prince Andrew BBC story. So we'll have two perspectives. We'll have it from the BBC producer, Sam McAllister, which is the Netflix one, and then the Amazon video one, which will happen later on, I think either this year or early next year. Yeah. Um, other than obviously the streaming stuff, is there any other news and entertainment? I feel like there's been, at least from what I've been seeing, kind of quiet. The only real news was uh, I think Angelina Jolie is kind of making the rounds again because of the Brad Pitt abuse that she says has been going on prior to their kind of notorious 2016 plane ride uh, that's going on. Do you have any insight on that or is there anything else we should be paying attention to coming out of Hollywood? Yeah, that particular story between Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, I have followed it pretty intensely since I want to say about 2020. That's how long I've been covering this particular story. Mm -hmm. Uh, For people that don't know, Angelina and Brad are divorced. However, their child custody case for their three minor children is still ongoing and um, allegations around that 2016 domestic violence incident that allegedly happened on the plane uh, still continues on. And it's tied up into their Chateau Miraval legal battle as well. Angelina sold her share of the French winery, but uh, and she sold it to a Russian oligarch, which did not please Brad too much because uh, he wanted to buy out her share. But he would only buy out her share if she signed an NDA tying back to those 2016 domestic violence incident. So that's kind of how that all sort of plays out. Um, now that Angelina and her lawyers are talking about um, abuse that happened earlier than that uh, 2016 plane incident, this kind of opens up a can of worms too. And it ties to Angelina's FBI case um, where she's questioning why the FBI Los Angeles office dropped any charges against Brad Pitt after the national office recommended that he be charged with domestic violence. So it's a very complex web. It's not going to be simply just tied up in a neat bow and just completed, you know, in the next month or so. Um, And these allegations, you know, are are still chasing Brad Pitt. They are not going away. Yeah. How, as somebody that you've said, you've been covering this since 2020, how do you see this playing out? Was there going to be 
obviously not a neat bow on it, but do you think he'll actually ever get charged? Or are they going to settle to some sort of monetary agreement outside of court? Like, what, how do you think this plays out? I think legally it will be settled. I don't see him getting charged criminally at this point. We're now, what, in 2024? It's eight years later. Mm -hmm. And you've had Child Protective Services decide not to charge. The FBI decided not to move forward with charges. Um, but it is, a, it is a cloud of suspicion. And in Hollywood, I will just kind of give you like the, the feeling. There are probably like 50% of people who feel like he is getting away with something. Um, mm -hmm. And they don't understand why people just hold him in such high regard at all times. And there are other people who are on the other side and they're like, I don't necessarily believe Angelina Jolie. So it's going to be kind of a, he said, she said situation. I don't think it's going to affect his career to be honest. Um, but I do side eye him because if you ever want to go back and really read the legal documents of the FBI case, the New York times did a deep dive article and I will side eye Brad Pitt for quite a long time because Angelina said the reason she left after that 2016 plane incident was because that was the first time he had ever allegedly abused the kids. And when you hear what supposedly happened on that plane, it's pretty traumatic, to be honest. Yeah. And wasn't because I didn't follow it too closely, but wasn't he allegedly like drunk and now played a part of it as well on the plane, correct? Yes. And he is now sober and he has been sober since that incident um, has sought treatment for it. Um, but he was besides being verbally abusive, he was allegedly physically abusive to Angelina, um, one of their kids, and then also was dumping drinks not only on Angelina, but on several of the children in kind of a tirade. And how old were the kids when this happened? Um, the one person who has been acknowledged kind of in this whole situation, and I'll mention it because he was an adult at the time, is Maddox. Her oldest son was trying to protect his mother. Um, but all of the other kids were, I'm going to say, under 16 at the time. Okay. So, yeah, yeah they so were all young. very young. Yeah. Okay. It was like their adult children type of thing. Yeah. That's, that's so sad. Regardless of what age. Oh, yeah. What age yeah. they are. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, AJ, do you have anything on Brad and Angelina? I was going to switch the subject to something we talked about earlier, Chris. No, yeah, let's go with it. Because so Phil is a huge Chris Stapleton fan, um, like the Tennessee whiskey country singer guy. Mm -hmm. And so he's that's like his bucket list of like concerts that he wants to go to. And he's here in Minneapolis. So I'm sure Phil will end up going to see Chris Stapleton. Yeah. Do you have anybody? So for me, mine is Kendrick Lamar, a rapper and all of his concerts like the fans are all singing the lyrics rather than him for most of it as he's just hype on stage and it's a, a huge spectacle. Do you have anybody that makes your bucket list of performers, whether it's singers, comedians, whoever that you would want to see live? That is really interesting. I'm not a big concert goer, to be honest. I don't like okay. 18,000 people all around me. And I think some of that comes out of the pandemic of like, people are just gross. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a great question because I feel like a lot of the people, because of my job, I get to see a lot of people in person and mm -hmm. get to see them perform that I rarely have a bucket list. Because mm -hmm. even I, I think about this too, because it's like even some of the performers that have toured over the last few years, you know, I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of the big ones have like Bruce Springsteen and Beyonce and Taylor, and none of them has gotten me to like, grab i'm gonna have to think about that okay one. so I'll, I'll change it then because obviously you live in a much different circle than me and yeah <laughs> do you see people in like a smaller settings and private events is there any performer that you've seen like who's the best performance you've seen kind of in a smaller setting then if you're not going to huge stadiums oh in a smaller setting yeah oftentimes we get um you know they'll say like hey come and and so and so will sing a song mm -hmm. huge jackman was actually kind of fun but yes. I know um, in a very small setting um, at the Beverly Hills Hotel during when he did Greatest Showman, mm -hmm. there was probably about 50 of us and he was singing songs from the movie. Oh, I'm so jealous right now. Yes. That I think was a bucket list item just because there's something so lovely about Hugh Jackman. You know, he is a triple threat. But he is someone who understands how to be an A-list star. He's mm -hmm. kind. He's generous. He gives you funny quips. He'll give you all of the sound bites that you need to bring back to your editor, whether it's video or audio or you have to write an article. And uh, just 
really listening to him because oftentimes people are like, yeah, I sing and I'm going to do a musical. And, you know, they sweeten the sound and then they, they do their music. He's a legit singer. He's really good. That's awesome. Though there's a, kind of a similar story to like a small group of people watching a concert. Prince, back in the day, used to throw parties at his house. And I had a friend that was invited because he was kind of in the entertainment circle here in Minneapolis, invited to this party. He was like, Prince, we thought was not here. And it was just us partying outside on his little lawn. And he goes, it gets towards the end of the night. And all of a sudden you see the balcony doors open. He goes, Prince comes out with his guitar plays a couple songs, goes back into his room. And he's like, we all just stood there. Like what the hell just happened? And it was, he's like the best thing he's ever seen. So like seeing artists in like a small setting like that, I think is so much better than going to, you know, a Taylor Swift era's tour in a huge stadium. Cause you get that intimacy. That I'm jealous of like, that sounds incredible. Yeah. And especially yeah. since he's no longer here too. I mm -hmm. think I would have loved to have seen Michael Jackson live. That would have been another person. Um, despite his very sketchy background, allegedly. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I really do think that we've lost some, some major greats. Tina Turner would have been another one, I think yep. too. Yeah. I, I feel like some of those that we've lost over the past few years, like some of the greats. Um, and by the way, they're filming, um, the, Michael Jackson movie right down the street from my house. So we've been seeing oh. all the movie trucks and everything because the Jackson, I live very close to the Jackson estate. So coming to visit you, yeah. <laughs> I have to get <laughs> you're, you're like your whole neighborhood. There was the, the, you know, bizarre documentary style murder that happened. What was it like last year? where you said they were like oh, yes. chopped up and moved all over the place. You live next to a bunch of famous Michael Jackson's house, apparently, or estate. Ray just... Romano is my neighbor. Like what? Jerry Ryan. And I, and I live near the Phil Hartman murder house too. Like that's not another thing. Right. Uh, like there's, there's a lot of Hollywood history. Like you just don't realize. And I think people, I think everyone just assumes that celebrities live in Beverly Hills. And mm -hmm. there are plenty who do. However, um, I live on the Valley side and the Valley side, you get lots of land, you get, you know, double and triple lots. So if you really want a majestic, like big backyard, um, in my area, there are some horse properties, even though you're in the middle of the city, it's wild. You can actually keep your horse in your backyard, um, because they have like a triple lot and you're mm -hmm. able to have like a barn and things like that. So, um, there are all these like weird little hidden gems and my area, Honestly, and since I would say in the last five years has become a celebrity hotspot. So, yeah, that, do they feel like they can probably hide a little bit better? They're not in the spotlight, I'm sure, out there. And well, speaking of all of your, you know, neighbors that you have, are there any weekend plans? Are you going with Dancing with the Stars? Or are you schmoozing with, you know, <laughs> Beyonce this weekend? What, what, what is, what is Chris up to this weekend before we get out? You know, it's so funny. A, a lot of times, um, and most of the events other than like award shows are during the weekday. So all of my big events usually happen through the week and my weekends are usually like hanging out with friends this weekend. Guess what, everyone brace yourself. I'm doing my taxes. So <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I know. Whoa, Please, word, breaking news. <laughs> what <laughs> a glamorous weekend I am about to spend. <laughs> I, I know it's really one of those. I mean, and it, and it's funny because like a lot of times I will spend like like next week I have like a set visit to Days of Our Lives. IKEA is doing a whole new like secret launch, and I'm going to that on like Wednesday night. Like those are the fun things. And then my weekends yeah. I'm always like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that, that completely just shatters my vision of what you or my perception of you. Know, it's just gone. I'm like in my mind, she's like, you know, yeah, she's probably out on the red carpet somewhere sipping champagne with Cher. Like, I don't know. Like, Krista, she's cruising on like Oceanside yeah. and top down in like a like a Porsche. But like, just no, she's just in her sweatpants at home doing taxes. Yeah, doing taxes with my like count note receipts and things <laughs> like that. You know, it, it, it is. It's very funny um, because when I lived in New York City, my life Life was very much like things happen on weekends and you have like mm -hmm. these big glamorous weekends out here in LA. Everything is the complete opposite. I thought I was like, I got this. Like I worked in entertainment in New York. It's going to be exactly the same in LA. It's totally different in New York. People stay up late and sleep late in LA. People go to bed early and wake up early. Um, and all the partying is done basically Sunday through Thursday where in New York, it's all about the weekend. Mm -hmm. So it's it's wild living in the two because it 
they're so they're so different and um unique in their own way so la is a little bit more of is a sleepier town than new york city well you have fun doing your taxes this weekend and i hope next week at all of your you know super secret parties you get a lot of stories that you can come and tell us but as always ladies and gentlemen kristen burr entertainment news is brought to you by north america banking company go to nabanko.com to learn more remember fdic equal housing lender kristen we will see you next week have a great weekend Oh, yeah, it's going to be a great weekend. <laughs> Counting receipts and calculating. So fun. <laughs> all right. Hopefully you get all the money back. AJ, you as well. Have a great weekend. We do have to read one of our – and, Chris, you should stay for this. Oh, I should. Okay. AJ has a, a listener oh. email because, obviously, we've been taking over the Tom Bernard show and at least the last 30 minutes of it. And I didn't know how we were doing, but, AJ, the people have spoken. Yeah, you know, we didn't get a whole lot. So in the, the, the listeners usually are pretty active. They're very typey, and they let mm -hmm. us know kind of what they're feeling. We didn't get a whole lot the first couple of days. Thomas, though, writes in, hey, Tevin and AJ, a huge shout out to you guys for this week. Awesome job. Lots of laughs. So much fun listening. Cheers, Tom. Tom, cheers to you. Yeah, cheers to you, Tom. Cheers to you, Tom. A little positive feedback never heard anybody. We'll toot our own horn on the way out. But listeners, everybody, thank you for sticking with us. Tom will be back next week. There is no family show today. So the next time you hear all of our voices will be Monday morning. And yeah, have a good weekend. We'll see you then.